Hi, this is Dave from Free Run Speed. I have to admit to something. I do watch shoe review videos from all the famous YouTube video folks who do shoe reviews. And that is also where I get many of the questions. And today we're gonna to talk about a question that Seth James Demore had on his latest review of the Saucony Endorphin Speed. It was a simple question. He asked, I want to know how the shoe companies, I often wonder how they sew these together. And so today, I'm going to answer that question. So I'm going to start with the basics. I think I talked about this earlier. There are essentially three types of running shoe uppers. The first is a standard mesh upper. And how this works is there are mesh suppliers in Asia. The very big shoe companies, Nike and Adidas specifically, they have sourcing departments. The, their entire job is to source materials. And for that, all the material vendors come to them at one time and show their stuff. The small companies have to go to Asia and actually go find these material vendors. Generally, they invite them to the factory where their shoes are being made and they have meetings and maybe they have one or two or three or have a material day and invite all the material people through. And the material vendors leave a book that is full of little swatches of all the materials. Just like if you were shopping for carpet, that book that you turn over at Home Depot or wherever you go, it's the same thing. In that scenario, the sourcing department has an idea of what all the shoe departments, whether it's uh, football or soccer, running, basketball, tennis, what they're looking for. Okay, so that's number one. Or if, if it's the brand that is bringing in suppliers, they already have a design in hand and they're looking to match a, a material to the potential, the design, the visual of the design itself. The second, and it's becoming more prevalent because it's now easier to do, is the common term of engineered mesh. With engineered mesh, the brand goes out there with a mesh design. They've engineered the mesh. They've designed the mesh that they want, and they have someone make it for them. There are minimums to that mesh, so it's a little bit more expensive because with the, the other way, you can essentially buy whatever you want. If you're going to make 1,000 shoes, you're going to make... 30,000 shoes, the price is different, but you can essentially buy what you want. With engineered mesh, you have a minimum that you have to buy. So depending on what that mesh is, who the supplier is, there is you have to buy it. You don't have a choice. You can't, you can't say, you know what, I'm only going to make 1,000 pairs. I only need enough material for 1,000 pairs. They're going to say, no, you're going to buy enough material to make 30,000 pairs. So you understand there's a cost difference. Or a risk difference and then the final one that I talked about is knitted uppers and there again the brand is designing what they want it to be but then the product is put onto a computer and that computer works with the computer generated generated knitting machines and creates the upper from scratch those are the three mate uppers, and I think I talked about that in a video a few weeks back. But now I'm going to talk to the question that I, I'm not sure if that's the question, that this is the question that Seth was coming up with. But how are the uppers actually sewn to become the shape of your foot? Material is flat. It doesn't come into the shape of a, a shoe. It's flat. From the design of the shoe, the factory 
has pattern makers make patterns of all the upper pieces by size. So it, it's, it's just like going to a fabric store and picking out a, a pattern for a pair of shorts and you creating your, sewing your own shorts. It's the same thing. There's a pattern for this, for each one of these uppers. The materials are brought in on big, huge rolls. And at some point, the pattern folks take a pattern, put it on a flat piece of material and cut it out. Plain and simple. That's how, that's the, how all the pieces of the upper are, are pulled out. Once the pieces are pulled out and stacked up, they go to the sewers. And again, depending on if it's this knitted upper or it's this engineered mesh, what's different is the number of sewers that it takes. The knitted upper takes almost no, very little sewing. That's the reason why the brands went to knitted uppers is because it takes a, a large piece of the labor force out of the mix. If most of the upper is being put together by, a, by knitting by a computer, then you don't need people that do patterns and do all that other thing, all those other things. The pieces go to the sewers and the sewers start putting an upper together. I'll backtrack just a bit. So you have the pieces. Now, whatever needs to be welded onto the upper goes to the stamp welders. Things like this Saucony logo, which is welded on, or these support pieces right here, whether they're support or just pure design features. Those have to be welded onto the exact piece. So that gets sent to the, the stamp welders. The pieces are physically placed in the exact spot that it needs to be, and then it goes through the, the stamp welding process. When that piece comes out of that process, the logo or these pieces are set in place. Now, once all that's done, the upper pieces, however many pieces there are, go to the sewers and the sewers get to work on putting the upper together. And this is all done before the last, which creates the actual shape of the shoe is applied. That's the last step. After. Once the upper is complete, then it's pulled over the last and then the shoe can start to be constructed. So let's use the Endorphin Pro. The most intricate sew sewing on this entire shoe is in the tongue. So first we have a standard stitch right here that holds the tongue in place so that when you pull on the tongue, it's locked down. But if you look inside the shoe, there's a lot of stitching that had to go to, to put this gusset together. And so there's a hidden stitch. There's a stitch right up here at the top and it's hidden back behind this material right here, the, the lime green liner material. So there's a stitch back there that's holding this tongue together. And they hide it because guess what? That's where your foot is. And so you don't want to stitch right there where you're, that's going to rub up against your foot, even if you have a sock on. So they hide it behind the liner. Finally, the upper has to be put together in the shape, the general shape of a shoe and your foot. First part is a little bright, but you can, maybe you can see the stitches down here. So this piece is known as a strobel board. There's nothing to it. This is simply a mesh piece, the same material that's in this liner. They put in the bottom of the a shoe and essentially that creates the bottom that gets glued to the, the midsole. And so it is stitched in completely all the way around the upper. So the upper is now, it's got an upper and it has a bottom. So now we have an upper, a tongue, a bottom, and now we have to sew it around to give it its shape. 
And so somewhere in this upper, we are sewing the piece together. And so in this shoe, and where it's done often is right here in the back. So you've got this side coming around here, this side coming around here, and they sew it together in the back. And that's what creates the, the general upper. It is not shaped completely until, it's, until the last is put inside. Brands do all kinds of different ways to sew that upper together. On this New Balance, so they have a knit upper. That knit upper essentially goes from here all the way around and they sew it on in two different places, right here and right here to this heel counter piece. So the heel counter piece is completely separate. It gets put into place and they stitch sew the remainder of the upper to it. When you look at this on shoe, there's no stitch back here. It's really hard to find where they put the stitch, where they put it. It's sitting behind, this is a panel right here and there's a stitch back here and so the, that upper is connected by a, a, a hidden stitch you can't see it and they do that for design purposes they don't want to they want it to be kind of a seamless design and so they put a, a stitch back there while all this is going on the midsole is also being created the pieces come in kind of kind of raw and where the injection ports are, there are pieces of EVA that are hanging off. And so they have a, a trim house in the factory where they are trimming the midsoles and buffing them and getting them exactly what you see when you walk into the store and see a running shoe. Those shoes are not, they don't come out of the mold looking that beautiful. There is someone that, that sands them and gets all the rough edges off. So that's all being done. Many midsoles are come in pieces. There's multiple pieces, like the Endorphin Pro has multiple pieces. I don't know how many, looks like maybe two, maybe three, but every running shoe has multiple pieces. Those pieces all come into one place and there are, there's a part of the factory that is putting them together. Once the midsole and outer sole, so the outer sole, same thing, comes in pieces, gets glued onto the bottom. Once all that is done and you got the upper being done, then they come together. You get the, the, the upper is now pulled over the last. Now the two of them can be bonded together. They put glue in the bottom of the midsole, glue them together, then put them through a process to cure the glue and create the, the finished shoe. Once the shoe comes out, there's someone at the end that is wiping all the glue off that, and the shoe goes on to final preparation. Someone puts a lace in, someone puts it paper around it, puts it in a box. That's the end of the, the production. I know this was a quick discussion, but again, if you watch Seth's video on the endorphin speed and had the same question, how are these uppers sewn together? Hopefully this helps you out and now you know. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great run today. Talk to you later.